Hey Realmwalkers, today we're going to go over a bunch of building techniques that you can do in Nightingale. We're going to start with the easiest and end with the hardest. I've also split them up into their own chapters so you can always refer back to them whenever you need to. Also you want to do a couple of things to your settings. First thing you want to do is go to your gameplay and you want to toggle on show advanced building information. This is off by default. What this does is if you activate build mode, you'll see realm building points down at the bottom there, along with your controls. Back in our options, you'll want to go to video and change your third person FOV all the way to the maximum. What this does is, is it allows us to see more of what we're doing. And the first thing I want to show here is foundation marking. And we're going to use these crude portals in order to do that. And all we're really doing is marking off the corner here. You can also use it to mark the height, but this is important when you want to line up foundations but want to keep the foundations separate. So for example, we're going to want to mark it if we want to split these foundations up. So right now you can see this limitation here that says building pieces limit, 3 of 1500, but you want this to actually be two different buildings. You'd think deleting the center would make it two different buildings, but it's not. As you can see, it's still showing us 2 out of 1500. But if we delete this, and then place a new one right at the corner, let's try and get this quite right. It might take a couple tries. That seems to be pretty lined up well here, and it's a little bit low. So that's a pretty good height. Um, let's look here. That's almost spot on. It's just a little bit off. Let's see, look there at the building pieces limit. It's 1 out of 1500. And this one is also 1 out of 1500. This means you can build a much larger building beyond the 1500 pieces limit. Alright, up next is a covered walkway. In previous versions, you could just slap a peaked roof up on these things. But now they've kind of removed that functionality. I don't know if this is a bug or if this is on purpose, but we can still kind of get a peaked roof, but we gotta glitch it a little bit. So let's temporarily put a couple walls down, and this gives us enough support to actually put a peaked roof down. So removing those still gives us that because we have our, our pillars here to give it support. And now we've got our walkway. So if you want to make a fishing pier or something along those lines, this is how that is done. All right, let's say that you've got a very tall room. You know, it's got a couple of stories high. The problem is you can't stack stairs up on top of each other. See, no matter what you do, it just won't snap into it. But what you can do is add floors. As long as the floor has some support from a wall or from a pillar, then you should be able to stack stairs up on top of each other. Like so. Previously you could do this infinitely, but they fixed it so that floors require support. We've also got a similar issue with the uh, Bhutan wood single stair, in that we want it to stack up top of each other, so it, we want it to go on this side. We want this stair to go on this side. Now there is one way to do this, and we have to go from the top down. And we'll have to make an upper floor here, just temporarily. We'll place the stairs on this end. We can delete this. We can place our other one down here. Now we have this, this staircase that goes up and down. In order for you to have multiple floors, you'll have to start from the very top, going all the way down to the bottom. We got this technique, which I like to call tree branch. And we'll see why in a second. But basically, if you have a pillar, you can place a couple of walls up on top of it. And the funny thing is, you can place another pillar up on top of this. And another wall on top of that. Now you can see why I call it tree branch. A lot of people are making builds based on this technique, and it's pretty impressive. They'll probably patch this out at some point, but we should enjoy it while we can. Okay, up next is the octagon, and mad props to DaVinci for figuring out how to do this with like much better position than before. 
So if you see them in the Discord, say hi and say thanks. Okay, so let's bring in a foundation. We're going to use this little nubbins as a guide. Like if you point your reticle at it, make sure you remember where you put it. So let's, let's place it around here, let's say. And also take note of the height. You know, each increment kind of lines up nicely on this, this peeps box. So just remember, or you can still count it, you know, one, two, three, four, five, and then place. Just make sure the rest of your foundations are also five high. But for now, let's leave it at the minimum because that's just going to make it easy for us. Let's turn off the interface for a second just so you can see where this center point is. But the center point of this foundation is to the bottom of the X on that peeps box. We kind of want to keep a general idea of where this point is. Anyway, let's add two reference points and delete these two. Bring in another foundation. Rotate it a couple times. Let's adjust it. Again, remembering kind of where that, that center point was. Let's you may have to do this a couple times, by the way. It's it's not exactly easy. That's as close as we can get it. Let's move this out of the way. Yeah, that's a pretty good center. It's a little bit off, but that's okay. We don't need it to be perfect. All you gotta do now is extrude it in however many increments you want. So here it's three out from the center. And the corners are, you know, it's not great, but it works. And you can fill this in however you need. That's how you make an octagon. Well, this is half of one, but that's okay. Okay, up next is the hexadecagon, which is basically double the octagon. It gives you a much more rounder shape. Get right up on it. Let's place down our foundation. Two reference points. Our center point is, again, just the bottom of that X, roughly where this line is. Okay, let's place the next one down. We're going to rotate it once. Let's adjust that center and extrude twice. Let's delete these. Got to place another one, rotate one more time. We can take off the interface for a second just to fine tune where that center point is. Looks good. Let's extend out. This is going to be really messy. I can, I can already tell. Rotate one final time. Let's go check our corners first. Uh, good. Ooh, this is off. This is not going to be as smooth as I want, but that's okay. Okay, let's look at our center, and it's kind of messy. Kind of messy, but that's okay. That's okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's not too bad. So this is one quarter of a hexadecagon. It's not perfect, and if you really work at it, it can be perfect, but that's okay. This is pretty good. I am happy with it. You just have to extrude it in all directions to get the hexadecagon. Now let's get into deep foundations, which is something that you'll use for something like making a footbridge across a river. Like having a bridge like this is okay, but it's not great. Yeah, it looks okay, but there's a better way to do this. So let's use some crude foundations as an example. Let's raise it up just a little bit. Like so. What we want to do, like you see how it's snapping around. What we want to do is aim for the space below it like this. It's not intuitive at all. But hear that sound? It sounded like it placed. That, the way you know that it did place is if you remove this. Let's grab a uh, pillar real quick. If it snaps like that, then you know it's placed down there. So what we're doing is basically we're putting a foundation beneath the foundation. Let's do that again. Let's put this crude, point it down at the bottom here. We want another one here. Another one over there. And one finally at the other end. Let's try and snap some pillars. This has to go too. And what we can do here is, you know, place some, uh, place some upper floors. Which isn't bad, right? It looks pretty good like this. But we can do better. 
Now there is a different, another easy way to do this, or an easier way anyways. So let's start another foundation. Let's pop it. And what we want to do here is we want to kind of sit at the edge and place like that. You can hear it happening. You want to do this, populate, and then place another one down below. Otherwise, you can just kind of feel for it. You know, if you if you have a good idea of where the pieces are, and like here, we're snapping something to this foundation, and we can see this building pieces limit. If we adjust it over here, it just says placing. But if we move it over here, it says we're going to be placing to this building. But still, if you want to be sure, just go tile by tile until you're satisfied. I'm not sure who which originally discovered how to do this, but very, very good job. I'm sure a bunch of people. Very, very nice, yes? Okay, let's get into some more complex bridge building. You know, let's say you want to cross this gap with the bridge. Let's say you're built over here on that plateau, but you want to be over here for, I don't know, hunting or fishing or whatever. We can do it. It's just going to be a little bit labor intensive. Let's start over here so it's easier to deal with. Let's make a bridge that starts from here and goes all the way to the other end. Let's start off with crude foundations. And what we're going to do here is just extend it all the way to the end here. I think that's pretty good. And what we want to do here is if you can see, like, there's these ones at the bottom. Let's just delete all the ones above them, like this. We only want to get rid of the ones that are absolutely necessary. What we're basically doing here is replicating a simple beam bridge. But yeah, there you go. Now we can see how we can build. We're basically doing the same thing as the footbridge, but we're elevating it and making it much larger. We just have to do a lot more work. So something like this. And you can put more stuff up on top, like, I don't know, railings and columns and peaked roofs. And doing deep foundations makes it look really, really nice, because then you can just walk like this. Well, there you have it, folks. These techniques ought to help you on your building journey in Nightingale. And if you've got any tips of your own, be sure to tell us about them down in the comments. And also share your builds with the rest of the community, both in the official Discord and in the subreddit. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Peace.